It's time for Art Material Reviews with Angie Mason. That's me. Today's review, Windsor & Newton Pro Marker Watercolor Set. Okay, I just got these Pro Marker Watercolor um, markers from Windsor & Newton. There's 12 of them, 12 different colors it comes with. So I thought we could try them out together. Here they are. I'm going to start with this blue. This is Cerulean Blue. We have two sips on um, all the markers. We have a sort of a medium, uh, larger brush tip. And then we have the fine point tip. For more detail work. So let's go with the medium brush tip to see the color. So there you go. There's some color. Now, what happens if I actually add water to the watercolor markers? I happen to have some right here. This brush. I'll just put this so you guys can see. And as you can see, not much. So these markers, I think, are more like markers. And they don't interact as, like, if they were just straight up watercolor and you can move them around. I don't know what it would, what would happen now if I take the marker and go on the water. It kind of makes it hard to, it makes the ink, the pigment sort of, um, feels like the pen ink is drying out. You know, when you use a marker and the ink's not coming out properly. So it doesn't quite feel like what I was expecting for a watercolor. I know that I have water pens that um, have pigment in the water pen and that totally flows like watercolor. And, and moves around like watercolor. These feel more like markers. So if you're into maybe lettering or just making big bold shapes, I think that these probably would be really cool. I'm not really actually making anything right now. I'm just making marks to experiment with the the markers to learn about them. So here's the fine, let's see the fine line. Got your fine line. That's pretty cool. These would be, I think, useful for doing maybe like detail work or if you really needed to make something really bold. So. On to the next color, we'll go with this, sort of like a burnt umber. Yep, this is burnt umber. So, let's see, it looks rich and chocolatey. This one flows a little bit better when it touches the wet surface. It's, um, you know, all about experimenting with these different ways to make marks. Different tools and ways that we can show things. This, I believe, is lemon yellow. It's very lemony. And it's blending a little bit with that burnt umber I just put down. Uh, this is interesting. This marker, for whatever reason, I don't know if the pigment inside the marker has to flow down, but uh, the larger brush on the lemon yellow is is kind of dry. I don't know if that's just a glitch, if I got a dud, maybe. <laughs> but in any case, we're moving on to... Ivory black, ivory black, 
better be dark. And it is. This would probably be great for doing lettering and line work. For all you lettering people out there. This is the big... Or actually, this was the fine side. This is the fine size. But yeah. And I have no idea why I'm making the shapes and marks that I am, but... Um, just doodles, you know. We're doodling away. Making an abstract marker masterpiece. Really, come on, guys. Only the best for you. We're going to go with a diox dioxazine violet. Dioxazine violet. It sounds very scientific. How does it look? Is it technical and scientific looking? Well, it kind of looks like an amethyst, which is magical. And I like that. And the color on that feels good. It feels like there's a lot of pigment inside that particular marker. Not like the lemon yellow. The lemon yellow was a lemon. How did they plan that? Is it a joke? <laughs> okay, now I have cadmium red hue. And I admit it's going to probably be... This one should be orangey. Yeah, look at that. Red orange. I like that one. Feels really lovely. Bold. Bold strokes. <laughs> so then I got the finer tip. Make some lines. And whoa, those are the ones I did already. You stay off the paper. Next up. And our little list of markers that we're testing out. We have Prussian blue. That should be rich. Let's see. It is pretty rich. I like it. So that's Prussian blue on the medium tip. Let's see the fine tip. Just come up here. Like that. Like that. Yay. Yay, lines and marks. And now, Windsor and Newton Pro Watercolor Marker Hooker's Green Dark. How dark is dark? Why it's pretty dark. Look at that. It's a really rich dark green. It's almost like, I guess a really dark pine tree color. Ooh, I could just keep filling the page with that color. It's nice. Okay, next up, what do we have, guys? Why? We have, here, wait for it, alizarin crimson hue. What do you think that looks like? It looks like that. It's kind of a um, pink red color. I don't know if um, this one's also a little bit of a dud and there's not much pigment in it. It feels a little drier than the other ones. The other ones had a really good flow. The fine side feels a little bit more rich in color. So, you can see, it's kind of like this pinkish, melony, red color, watermelony color. I'll probably make like a watermelon illustration with this. So, maybe that'll be something later. We'll make a watermelon character. And here's the green for our watermelon. What would that color be called? Why, it's sap green. Okay. That's pretty dark and rich. Yeah, feels like watermelon. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm getting hungry. Oh, hold on. Um, did I do this one? Did this one fall off the page? Let's see. Do do. I did that. Hooker's green. Okay, guys. So then this one is one of our last two. And this one is cadmium yellow hue. Let's hope it's a little bit uh, better flow than the lemon yellow. 
And it is. It is. Thank goodness. That lemon yellow was a little disappointing. I'd say the um, crimson red hue and the lemon yellow were my least favorites because of the fact that um, the flow, the quality of pigment that came out of the, the brush tip wasn't as vivid as the other markers. Now, the thing I said before, well, actually, let's finish the colors. Let's finish the colors. Here we have the yellow ochre. It's the final color to look at in this set of 12. And it's ochre -y. But it does also like the crimson and lemon yellow feel a little bit drier. I don't know why that is. If I'm just unlucky with the set I got or if that's just the way they are. And this is the fine tip. So my takeaway is, well, let's say this. On all of these, if you were to take now, because they're called watercolor markers, if you take your brush with water on the watercolor markers, what happens? You get a little bit of, um, it seemed like the hooker's green really um, is getting picked up there. And some of these colors, though, they don't seem to move. They're not very flexible. I know sometimes when you're painting with actual watercolors, you could take the layers of watercolors and when you put water on them, you could still move the pigment around and, and push it around a little bit. They don't seem that flexible to work with. So that's about it for this review. Um, I mean, they're fun to play with. Always fun to play with. I wouldn't say that they're horrible. It's a Pro Marker watercolor set for Windsor and Newton. I think that they probably are going to be a lot of fun to play with, making bold shapes, maybe doing some lettering. I'm going to be experimenting in my sketchbooks and probably show you guys some more here. So yeah, Windsor Newton Pro Watercolor Marker set of 12 basic tones. Um, I believe these come from Dick Blick, where you can get them, or you can Google them online, and if you wanted to buy them somewhere else, you can do that as well. So that's about it. I hope you guys keep making stuff, and you keep dreaming yourself awake. This is Angie from my studio, and I'll see you guys later. Bye! Be sure to like and subscribe to follow along on more art exploration videos, including art studio tours, sketchbook tours, art process videos, art material reviews, like this one you just watched, as well as a lot of other fun, silly videos and just overall creativity. Thanks for watching.